way. Um, there is um, your, your view. Well, I've heard a lot I've recognised. Uh, I suspect most strongly um, uh, what, what Elizabeth was say, say, saying about um, the, the sort of knock-on impact of this, because I, I, I rather take the view that if you were to start from what is supposed to be being done here, then by and large, um, our organisations weren't that far from it. Mm -hmm. At least for those people on substantial remuneration, they were typically not on that higher base salary, um, a very substantial amount of it variable, and of that variable component, a very substantial part of it deferred. Now, that's where we were. Um, whether we will s s sustain that um, in, uh, as a result of that, because logically that's where you should be. You know, and that's where the, the sort of pressure here is to move us in that direction. But actually, the, 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 you know, share your sense that, that we're moving in exactly the opposite direction because the bank is paying more. Um, I mean, I'm particularly conscious of it because my bit of the business is at times closest to the bankers. So my bit of the business is where um, most of the people I've recruited over the past 10 years have been bankers. Um, they're on some very substantially higher salaries. It's going to be a bit more difficult uh, unless our structure is substantially less sensible for our business. I mean, generally speaking, I think it's good having a discussion on, on uh, uh, compensation structures and how they're going to change. In the example you just uh, trying there, are many companies who already have these things in place. Lehman is a good example where vesting period for uh, for bonuses, uh, for, for stocks, were five years, and uh, for senior people, uh, at least 50% on the bonus was paid out in stock rather than in cash. So, in a way, it was already in place. Did it help? I don't think so. So I think that part of this move to fixed, uh, an increased portion of fixed pay, it is aimed quite specifically at risk takers, and it's to say to them, whatever you do, it, um, sorry, not whatever you do, but, but you, you know, you're paid to be a professional risk taker. So we don't want you want to incentivise you to take more and more risk to make more and more gain. We want you to, to incentivise you to take the appropriate amount of risk for what you are, you know, for whatever your business objective is. And I, I think that's why that there's this sort of, in some ways, move back what is to, to fixed pay because it says, you know, whatever you do, you're still going to get your basic salary. The trouble is, the fixed pays that we're talking about <coughs> are really about basic. I mean, are, are, are about paying people enough to live on. They are about, you know, the, the investment banker who says, well, you know, I've got a million um, US dollars last year, or a million pounds last year in my um, in my pay packet, including my bonus, and of that my fixed salary was 200,000 pounds. And because you'll know well, you're going to defer, you know, 700,000 of that million now, actually I want 300,000 pounds uh, fixed salary, or whatever the number is. And so that's really, I think, what the, it, it, it is absolutely the unintended consequence of badly, of badly drafted thinking and regulation. It's going to be really hard to cope with, because I think that I mean, what, we, what they really should be saying is actually people should be pay, paid far less. I mean, I think that's what they're trying to say. The question is who makes it, uh, decision, what, what is far less, what does it mean, what's appropriate, Precisely, exactly. and that, that's, uh, I mean, it exactly. is a move towards more um, social, uh, 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 socialistic uh, view, I mean, um, what, we, what we see is that um, there is more and more regulation, and the regulation that has passed all the post the crisis in the US, for example, just for reading in the morning is 2,300 something pages. Uh, why? Uh, that is not a good movement because if governments get more and more involved for a good reason. But it, are these things the first thing the problem is probably? That's the big question. Yeah. I'm, I'm not so sure. I'm troubled to be all these regulations about amounts of pay and deferring. Then there's another impact of regulation, which is you know, the tax incentives. And you know, there's been tax implications on companies paying bonuses. Which <coughs> you know, initially was thought it might be a restraint, but the last couple of days, I mean, JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs have announced massive amounts of bonus tax pay. So, you know, this other sort of external regulation seems not to have affected their decision. They want to pay what they want to pay, and
And arguably, the tax wasn't high enough, and it wasn't long enough. Yeah. Okay. If the tax had been higher and longer, you might have provoked a more serious reaction. And we've just seen as a one-off cost that could probably be put through the report yeah. accounts as an exception item. And away you go. We'll, we'll, we won't worry about that too much. I think it's interesting, you'll see, I, I'd like that to contrast my experience in Asia, because I, I lived in Hong Kong for 16 years, working for strangers all the time, so I'm one of those people that have been there, sort of man and boy. Um, and, uh, and there we, we had a 15% tax rate uh, for uh, salaries, and your, no capital gains tax at all, and that hasn't changed. There was no goods and sales tax, no VAT, because then there was a, a, a corporate tax. So it was a very, it's a very simple tax regime, but it doesn't change the behaviour of the risk takers, at least not in our industry. I mean, the fund managers behave the same in Hong Kong where they pay very low tax as they behave in London, because, you know, risk taking is what fund managers do, if you see what I mean, so that's what our business is. And so I, I don't think that the tax system is actually a very good way of controlling risk taking behaviour. I don't think it, I don't, it's merely a sort of, you chaps have made too much money, we'll have some things as the government, I mean, it's not a, um, but I, I it's suppose where I suppose where I'm coming from is I think coming back to my fundamental point, if if employers are thinking, well, we will just we'll pay a bit more than they do because yeah. we want to hire this and that person, and the, and the staff are sitting there thinking, well, actually, if I sh shuffle around, I can earn more money. Effectively, the only way to, I think to be really you know, to make an impact on this is almost. <laughs> an illegal cartel amongst the employers so right we're just not going to push up investment bankers salaries because they are overpaid let's say and we all have this unwritten agreement that we won't push up fixed remuneration and then they can come to us and threaten to resign and threaten to go elsewhere but we're not worried because we know you're not going to hire them or you're not going to hire them and, and it as long as you've got that competitive market this is really difficult well there is going to be something in this regulation which is going to be about guarantees mm. which will uh, make it more difficult for people to move because um, there, there are going to, certainly going to be issues around internal guarantees about what you can guarantee stuff to stay. We might have threatened then you're going to go, and I, and I think there will also be on the other side something from you know of, of guarantees to entice people away from their front of So that may have some of that effect. I think the uh, limited uh, to only to attract people that you can provide all the guarantees, but not to That's my answer. As I go back to, I, I remember when Warren Buffett went into Salem and decided that everybody was paid too much and said, right, we'll change the whole structure of compensation here. And I don't know how long it lasted, about six months or something, before it just collapsed because nobody was prepared to follow his lead. And then the staff were looking out the door and the business was going to collapse. So it really, you know, it just didn't work because the rest of the industry didn't want to fall in line. And I think that's quite interesting. Is that not a chance for the non-financial incentives? Is that not now the time to, I mean, the ideas have been around for a long time. Mm -hmm. Is it not, I don't know, maybe there's some ideas we talk about, the pay side, the financial side so much. What was the other side, mm -hmm. the non-financial side? Is that, or is that not relevant or not that? Well, I think, again, it sort of it comes back to your, your point about the contract between employer and employee. And, you know, it, back in the early 1980s, or 1980s when I started, you know, people did go to work for their employer for a very long period of time. Um, but I think the contract changed when um, w when the redundancies happened, particularly at the end of the 1990s, or the early, early part of the 1990s, and, and going into the end of the 1990s as well. So I think the contract between employer and employer has changed to become one that is far more transactional. Quite frankly, people will work that balance of just take six months off in between jobs, to, to, some, to some extent. And they, they are absolutely trying to maximise their earnings now so that they can then walk away from it after that. Did you bring that? I did, absolutely. Um, Veronica, you must have thought about this a lot more than these other people here because you haven't got the option mm of putting up salaries or giving bonuses. Have you come up with any ideas from your internal thinking?